Remember that figure 22 degrees that I said the rocks tilted up about 22 degrees? Well, this is way higher than 22 degrees. This is more like 45 or 50 degree tilt here. And there's a spot right in here, right, right along here, where it's back to 22 degrees. This is all 22 degrees in here. And then right when we get to this spot, we've got 45 or 50 degrees. But we're standing right here, standing right on a subfault. This is one of the subfaults um, here at Lake Mohawk. Um, and this actually, there's some places along Humpty Dumpty Road, I noticed where the shale, the shale is laid down in shallow seas, you know, laid, laid, laid down, it's in, in, in uh, calm water, and it's mostly mud. So it lays down perfectly flat, perfectly flat, like a, like a tabletop. Well, there's a place on Humpty Dumpty Road where as we're walking along here, you're walking on the top like the little fins. It's like you're walking, the shell has been completely tipped up vertically. So this is a major fault that we're standing on. I, I, I call it a sub-fault, but it's a significant fault of this area, okay? So um, we'll head up, uh, I'll head up this way. If anybody, it's, it's a very short rock scramble. It's quite safe and lots of fun. Um, is anybody gonna, y'all gonna, gonna come? You kids are gonna love this. Mm -hmm. Two ridges kind of diving down in this manner. It's a little hazy out there, but kind of right out where I'm pointing. It's almost mm -hmm. due south of us. That's called the Hudson Highlands, and that's where the Hudson River flows um, south. And imagine a river the size of the Hudson hitting a granite ridge like that. It's got to have some way to get through there. So it cut very deeply, um, over 200 feet deep. Um, is the Hudson River in that area. Where I lived in Statsburg up here north of Poughkeepsie for a couple of years, the Hudson River there's about 15 feet deep and they've dredged it out to 35 feet for certain ships. But down here at the Hudson Highlands it's over 200 feet deep. That's also a place where that mine, and that's about a thousand feet. That ridge is about a thousand feet. So that glacier was five times higher. That glacier was five times higher. So when it moved down and then retreated, it found the weakest part of that ridge and, and began to cut, began to cut through that ridge. And that's, and that's the uh, pathway that the Hudson River has found uh, to the ocean. Um, so as you can see from this perspective, Lake Mohonk looks kind of long and narrow, doesn't it? And through some, some places it looks kind of round or oval, but really it's long and narrow. Is that the look, end of the lake right there? This is the end of the lake. And when you look at Lake Awasting or Lake Minnewaska, they look, they're kind of long and narrow too. So that's indicative of some, um, of, of so, something going on there. Now from the, from Sky Top Tower, you could see six states on a clear day. Can anybody think of those six states that we might see? Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut. <laughs> yeah. New Jersey. That's it, that was easy. I think we read it in pamphlet. Oh, you did? <laughs> this um, Shaft Chalet is really fun. I would recommend a few at a time coming to check this out. This is like a 150 foot um, drop here. It's just really wonderfully exposed, beautiful view. It kind of gives you that sort of precipitous feeling. Uh, so you guys, anybody who's interested in checking that out, it's a really neat summer house. <laughs> I don't see a lot of takers, that's okay. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. Yeah. Occupancy by more than 56 people is unsafe. <laughs> yeah. Doing a big old excavation up there, putting a house on top of that rocky outcrop. And I just drove down to the club yesterday. Yeah. Is that construction that we're hearing? Yeah, somebody's put it. This Clo Valley Road, I'm surprised that we're allowing any new construction in there because it's just such a magically beautiful place. And then somebody's putting in a 
doing a big old clearing and excavation right there where that, that big scar is. So here we're looking at what's called Clove Valley. Here you can see the 22 degree uplift. Can you, I mean, it's so, it's so clear right here. And then this um, rounded um, uh, profile here is, is a track of uh, glaciation. Glacial valleys tend to be U-shaped and river valleys tend to be B-shaped. Um, Say that again. Glacial valleys tend to be U-shaped. Right, like this, mm -hmm. like this, and river valleys tend to be V-shaped. They're they're cut more deeply. And uh, so here we're looking at the Catskill Mountains. Now remember, these are the little nubs, the little nubs of that ancient mountain range that was as tall as the Himalayas. Um, and right out here, we're looking at the tallest peak of the Catskill Slide Mountain, about a little over four thousand feet. It's kind of a uh, gradual slope on the left and really steep on the right. Come around to the left and the next sort of prominent peak in the distance is sort of a flat top with a little hump on it is Picamus. So those are two of the tallest peaks of the Casco range. That so what at. caused them to go from 30,000 feet to 4,000 feet? What a great question. Time. Wind. They just eroded away? The water, yes, they just eroded away. The Catskill... So does that mean that the Himalayas were 100,000? No, no, the, Him the Himalayas are still rising oh, okay. at, at the rate of one inch a year. These are very, these are some of the old, this is one of the oldest mountain ranges on Earth right here. Right? The Himalayas are one of the newest, and the Rockies are the newest mountains on Earth. If they're real angular and steep... Yeah. And, oh. They're new? Yeah. Do you eat if a bug? I do. <laughs> that's, you know, that's an indication that I'm talking too much when I start to eat bugs. But these gnats are, they have just come out in the last two days. So, um, that fire is just scaring me. Mm. They said they had it under control yesterday, but obviously not. Now, what, what's, do you know what started it, or is it just no, I didn't woodland, know, or? No, I don't know what started it. It's right off of 4455. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't a cigarette butt or something. Okay. Because the highway, as Mike's was saying, the uh, the highway goes right through there. It's such a regular looking shape of a crook, kind of. Yeah. So will they do like a helicopter water drop or something? I, or? I don't know. Yesterday it was only 20 acres, but now it's looking to me like about 50 or 60. Oh, that, that's not still Mohawk property, is it? With that there? Park? No, that's actually Minnewaska State Park Preserve. Now, just to give you a little bit of the chronology here, where around the mountain house is 2,200 acres, Mohawk Mountain House. Adjacent to the mountain house is about 7,500 acres of Mohawk Preserve. Mm -hmm. To the south of Mohawk Preserve is another, I'm kind of loose on the figures here, 7,000 acres of Minnewaska State Park 12, Preserve. 12,000. 12,000 for Minnewaska State Park Preserve. And then Sam's Point Dwarf Pitch Pine Preserve is another couple of thousand acres to the south of that. So right now, we've got the whole ridge top community preserved. Except the only thing that's not preserved is Mohawk Mountain House. Isn't that interesting? The, play, the, 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 the people who were the originators and protectors and who held the, the vision for what land preservation can be, have the only private holding left on the ridge. But I don't feel any need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't need to worry about that. So these other people who buy these private homes, is this part of the preserve? Or? Well, yeah. Th this is no. This is actually these are there's some private um, land holdings that butt up against the preserve. And uh, what's happening is there's Mohawk Preserve, Mohawk Trust. Nature Conservancy, Open Space Institute, every chance we get to buy 